You know what? Wish you were here. There's a vegan street fair today. Oh, really? In North Hollywood. We're on oh, a route. I keep you here all day. I'd say, uh-uh, I got to go to the street vegan fair for a little while. <laughs> sister, hey, thank you, sister. I know you're super busy, and I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I'm enjoying this so much. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I, I'm a bit jealous of you Californians. You, you all seem to have, you know, monopoly on healthy food, healthy consciousness. I mean, it's it's like... It, it starts in California, and then hopefully the rest of the country will catch on eventually, you know? Right, right. Well, you know, I think it's the fact that people here can dress in summer clothes more of the year, you know, so they're concerned about how they look. And um, people like to be active out here, right? Bike riding, hiking, da 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 You can't do that, you know, if you're two or 300 pounds overweight. Or, you know, you can't, you, I won't say you can't do it, you don't enjoy it as much. Yeah. So, have a lot of sunshine out here, so it, it helps with the um, uh, feeling like you want to be out and about. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it, it sounds like you know you kind of coach and you work with a lot of people as they're as they're taking on this diet. And you gave us that that great example. Uh, can you tell us some of the other um, uh, recoveries you've seen in folks that you've worked with in diet who've overcome problems? Okay. Like, yeah. All right. Yes. So um, there was, uh, I went to this festival in Oxford, uh, and I've been invited as a speaker. And um, this man in the, in the audience, he's speaking with my husband. So when I, when I come from the, the, the presenter's table and join the group, the crowd, he says to me, uh, my husband says, okay, this man says he's ready. Because really, you have this information and these, these things that we know will work for people to help improve their health, if not totally turn around and help improve it. But they got to be ready. And that starts in the head and in the heart, right? Yeah. So yeah. he says, look, I will do whatever you tell me. Because I spoke about diabetes in the presentation. It was one of the things I touched on. And so many people are told, well, you've got this, you've got this, and you've got that by their doctors. First of all, they don't even totally understand what this imbalance entails, right? Yeah. So, for example, with diabetes, people who are like have are just way, way diabetic, so to speak, they have to understand that diabetes is the cells in the body. The body no longer can process the uh, sugars that food is broken down into for energy, and it has to get in from the blood into the cells to be, you know, to be used as for energy. Right. So they can't, if, if your sugar is three and four hundred, you've got to stop eating fruit. You've got to stop eating every source of sugars so that the body can start making cells that no longer have these damaged membranes. That's why they can't get the sugars out of the blood into the cell because the cell brain, cell membrane is damaged, right? So if you don't allow the body to recuperate and start making new cells without these damaged membranes, you'll never get over quote unquote diabetes, right? So he said, I'll do whatever. He says, I'm being rushed to the hospital, going into diabetic comas, and I, I, I just can't keep doing this. So I say, okay, first thing you've got to do is you've got to stop drinking, uh, stop eating anything with sugars in it, right? Now, this is not something the doctor usually tells people, right? They might tell them to cut back on fruit and don't drink the sugary drinks. But what about the high-carb stuff? That stuff is broken down into sugars too, right? right? So you can't keep eating all those potatoes and, and all that rice and things like that because it's going to be broken down and it's, it's just going to sit in your blood. I saw, I read what well, one doctor was describing in a book. He said it's like shards of glass. When that sugar sits in your blood, it's like shards of glass. And so... You take your, 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 your blood reading for your sugar, and it's off the chart. But you're like, why am I so tired? Again, you can't get that sugar out of the blood into the cells to be used for energy. So I told him, okay, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to only eat lots of green vegetables. I don't mean vegetables like yams and stuff. That's out. You're going to have to eat lots of green vegetables. You eat lean proteins because he was a meat eater. So, you know, you can't yank everybody off meat right away because... You know, some people are just not ready, and everybody's yeah. going to become vegan. So I said lean proteins and green vegetables. That's what you're going to have to eat. And you're going to have to do this anywhere from 
couple of weeks to maybe 90 days. Because every, you're made up of trillions of cells. All those cells need to be replaced. And the body needs to become this very efficient, well-oiled machine at making new cells again. So you don't want to put stuff in there that causes clogging or causes breakdown or doesn't help to bring nutrients to the body. So I'm going to have to ask my husband, how long did it take before he saw some... And the, and the other thing was supplements. We have to have supplements. And I, we were talking about this in part one. So people say, well, my great-grandparents, they didn't take supplements. And the answer is, if they grew up in the South, oh, yes, they did. When people were using pot belly soles and things like that, having to burn wood, keep themselves warm and cook food and stuff like that, what did they do with the ashes? In the morning, they took those ashes and threw them out in the garden. Guess what? You just mineralized your soil. Because after that wood burns, after that charcoal is burned, what's left? Those ashes are minerals that the tree has stood there probably for generations, picking up from the soil. Well, when you yeah. put that in your garden, now you have supplemented your soil and therefore supplemented the food that was grown there. That's a great so, point. That, yes. Uh, and, yes. And I think uh, what might be good here is I know, you know, the public has a conception of supplements. I think your idea of supplements is a little bit beyond that. So maybe you could tell us a little bit, like, like I think you make some of your own your own supplements, for one thing. I, and, and I, I do make some herbal things, but her, herbs are a fantastic plant medicine. I would not tell anybody to only use herbs as a supplement when they've got a serious imbalance. Okay. Okay, because herbs help the body to heal, but you can't use them as 24-7 nutrition. Herbs are bitter, they're very strong, they're going to help detox the body. They are going to have some nutrients in them, but most people are not going to do their herbs, first of all, fresh, which means that you would be able to get the enzymes in them. Excuse me a second. That's okay. Not off of my phone. <laughs> So, I like that. I like that ring. That's lovely. Like the ring, I love it too. <laughs> and so uh, you have to understand that it's, herbs can't replace uh, all the nutrition that you need for the body because they're very okay. strong, most of them, right? They're very cleansing and toxic for the body. So the kinds of supplements I'm talking about we need to take have to be. Uh, let's see. What do I say? They need to be plant sourced. That's the first thing. If it's not plant sourced, because you can get calcium from a rock, you can get iron from a rock, you can get a, all the mineral things from rocks, but the the molecules are the wrong size for the body to mm. use. They have to be metabolized from the soil by plants so that our body can receive and use them, right? Plus, by using those uh, minerals from things like rocks and coral reef and stuff. There are other things that come along with it that you don't want. The other thing is that you need to be able to know how much you're getting of each of these different types of, uh, of supplemented uh, materials. So whether it's minerals or vitamins, we live in an age where, for example, people don't understand the importance of calcium. Again, I've had chemistry and biochemistry classes and things like that. And if you don't get enough calcium, so for example, people, as they get a little older, and sometimes even younger, people can't sleep at night because they've got such horrible leg cramps. And they don't realize it. it's because they don't have enough calcium and all its cofactors. It's not just the calcium. None of the, none of the nutrients you need in the body works by themselves. So if it's a calcium or magnesium uh, deficiency and the muscles are not working properly, you can't just take the magnesium by itself. You can't just take the calcium by itself. You need the calcium, the magnesium, the vitamin D. You need all those things in the right uh, proportions so that they can work in a synergistic way to relieve whatever deficiency you have, right? right. So um, the supplement needs to be plant-based. It needs to also be able to tell you how much of each of those nutrients is in the formula you're taking. So sometimes people are taking these formulations and they'll say, well, it has this, this, it has this herb in it, it has this plant, da-da-da-da-da. You don't know how much you're getting in there, right? 
Because even organically grown food is not as nutritious as wild growing food. Wild growing food is a place where a seed has determined this is the excellent place for me to grow. Everything I need is right here. Okay, so that food is going to be much more nutritious, nutrient dense than food where somebody else has plowed up 20 acres. And even though it's organic, an organic plant does not guarantee you nutrition. It just guarantees you that supposedly they have not put uh, synthetic fertilizers in the soil and they haven't put synthetic or uh, uh, not, uh, inorganic materials on the plant. Yeah, That's what you're supposed to be guaranteed with organic. But organic broccoli or organic spinach, if it's grown in iron poor soil, guess what? It's not going to have much iron in it or any iron in it, right? Because plants take very few minerals to grow. They don't take very much to grow. That's this beautiful synergy on the planet, right? Where, why do they pick up all these minerals? Like, we need 60 minerals at a minimum in a day for us to be optimally nutri uh, uh, nutritionally optimized, right? But a plant only needs three or five minerals to grow. It can grow <laughs> and look beautiful, but not have all the things in it that we need. And because with agriculture, they do industrial agriculture in America and spreading to other places in the world. They just drop a couple things in the soil, if it needs it, to grow that plant. But you're not guaranteed of any nutrition in the plant. Even in a large field, from what I've been told and what I've read, one thing grown, say, in the northeast corner might have a nutritional profile very different from the thing on two, uh, two say it's a 200 acre, I don't know, corn or wheat or whatever field, the thing that's in the southwest corner, they may have a very different um, uh, nutrient profile. Yeah. Because yeah. they're in different soils, right? The different uh, amounts of different things may be in the soils at those two different ends of the field. So when you take a nutritional supplement, plant based, and it needs to tell you, does it have 500 whatever calcium in it, or does it have 1,200 uh, yeah. pounds of calcium in it? And so, I know, I tell people it's a brand new world. It used to be you went to the store you know, decades ago and you picked up this or that and the other thing, and you knew that it was probably, it was supposedly real food. Now you buy things, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not real food. When you have food that doesn't have textures, seeds, <laughs> Uh, fragrance, uh, it doesn't even decompose properly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. gotta start realizing, is this food or is this plastic, you know? <laughs> it's just not real. So when the food doesn't have a proper texture or it doesn't have a, a fragrance, that means there's nutrients missing in it. It's, it doesn't have its, all its components that make it what it should be. And I had, uh -huh, I just want to say this one thing. I yeah, had this yeah. senior woman at the uh, senior facility I was telling you about. And we went and I did a presentation on raw food and nutrition. And she came up to me afterwards because I always tell people eat things with seeds in them. She said, how can they call it? If I thought a fruit had a seed in it. How can you call it a fruit if it has no seeds? Right? A fruit is supposed to have seeds in it. So, well, for well. example, I don't do seedless watermelon. I grew up at a time when watermelons were full of seeds. Right? Right. What is seedless watermelon? It's, can you, should you be calling it a fruit? <laughs> you know? So anyway, uh, with the supplementation, it's very important that you know the source of the materials you're intaking and that you know how much is in there. Because like I say, some things you need a lot of, like calcium, it's like a gas tank in a car. That's the one fluid that you have to keep a, a good amount in the car, right? You don't keep as much oil in the car as you do gasoline. And so this is how the nutrients are in our body, because the car is really modeled after our bodies, right? It's got a vision system, it's got an exhaust system, you know? And uh, so with nutrients and fuels in the body, you need lots of greens, not so much uh, the, the sugary foods, things like that. The same with understanding the macronutrients, or the, the, how many mineral, uh, amounts of mineral, calcium, a whole lot, whereas uh, something like selenium, you don't need as much, but you must have it. Otherwise, things are not going to function properly in the body. So, um, so do you do you take a uh, 
complex uh, vitamin mineral, or do you take a, a variety of things that you've found are best for you? Like, I know a lot of people like like barley green stuff like that. Um, do you do you have a particular brand that you think is good? Um, what what's how do you do? It? Do you do it daily, once a week? How do you do it? What what I take uh, a longevity supplement because mm -hmm. everything's plant based. The minerals come from a uh, area in Utah where there's a, a, a layer of plant material that never fossilized. Like if you go up there and you you can flake it off so it was covered and it uh, decomposed and it was preserved, but it didn't fossilize, so it didn't turn into a rock. So this material is just taken and put into purified water. The minerals are drained out, and uh, then it's bottled. Huh, okay. okay. Period. So this also means that this is plant material that was around millions of years ago, so the air was cleaner, the water that they grew in was cleaner, and there, there are uh, formations like this around the planet, and that's good stuff for us because, again, this industrial agriculture from which our food is now, or most of our food is coming from, is just not enough. I also tell people that our great-grandparents, great-great-great, whatever grandparents, they didn't need as many nutrients as we needed in the sense that we now need a lot more nutrients. Because we're breathing polluted air 24-7. I live in L.A. You're not supposed to see the air you breathe. <laughs> and so your body is dealing with that constantly. Because when you go to sleep, uh, your lungs don't get a break. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your heart doesn't start stop eating. So we don't need as many calories as our great-great-grandparents needed. But we do need more nutrients because we're dealing with a toxic, polluted environment, adulterated food, adulterated water. Whereas their air was cleaner, their water was cleaner, their foods naturally were more fortified, you know, naturally. That's a, that's a very interesting point. I like that point. Right. Um, and see, they worked. What did they do? They worked harder than we worked. They moved. They walked. They had to lift things. They had to make things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what do they do? We live in a very automated society. We, got, we, we have apps for opening and closing doors. Just think about that. We don't even have to. You, you can go through a day and not physically have to open or close a door. You know? Know. That is pretty pretty pathetic. It's true. <laughs> and so when you go to third world countries, and I've spent some time in Africa, you look at people who are older, and I'm telling you, they're carrying things, they're chopping wood and things like this, and they're like decades older than you are, and they're nothing but muscle. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yes, yeah. and their air is cleaner, and people can say, "Well, you know, they've got this ailment, that ailment, that ailment." Well, I'd rather live in a place where there are not as many doctors, because in a way, well, they can say they need more doctors, but they're getting along, the and they don't have a bazillion doctors for you know every three people. Uh, I heard this one doctor, and he was talking about the fact that it, was it Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, mm -hmm. Mobile, Alabama. At one point, they had one doctor to every three people. Wow. Doctors were flocking down there because they knew they could get paid. People were so sick. And the reason is not because of genes. It's because of lifestyle. Yeah. So, you know, black and brown people, particularly, if they go home and turn on the TV and they say they've come up with this, uh, they've discovered this new disease or whatever, who are they going to say is most liable to have been on top on the list for it? Us. And it's not because we have bad genes, it's because of lifestyle. If you're eating fried food all the time, if you're eating barbecue all the time, oh, wait a minute, isn't that what we eat a lot of, <laughs> you know, if, if, you know, because, you know, people celebrate around that, right? Um, if you're eating, uh, if you're consuming tons of alcohol, if you're not getting rest, if you're stressing all the time, if, um, you know, if you're working jobs where you're around hazardous material a lot of times, a lot of times black and brown people are not people with office jobs, right? These all combine to cause a lot of stressors on the body. And so life, and then not exercising, that's the other thing, not yeah. getting in exercise. These are things that cause challenges, unbalance the body, and then it's very opportunistic 
for the body to start falling apart or to be susceptible to uh, disease or uh, whatever is going on, right? Yeah. So we have to understand, again, we want to put more life into our lifestyle and stop worrying about so much style in our lifestyle. I love it. I love it. All right. There, there's one other topic I want to hear from you. Uh, oh, oh, let me ask you this before we leave the supplementation. Do you take a B12 supplement? Actually, in my Longevity uh, product, there is B12. So yes, okay. I end up doing that. And, you know, I used to tell people, oh, no, you can get it from the food. Just eat that. Other. But the food is just not growing properly anymore. And like I said, they keep monkeying it with, monkeying with it in the lab and the fact that they're putting all the chemicals on it. So it would be bad enough if they just grew the food, uh, the soil is deficient, and uh, you're not going to get everything you need, but now your body's challenged because they're putting all these darn chemicals in and on the food. Now they not just put it on the food, they now put it in the seed. People don't realize they put this stuff in the seed. I so know, man. If the bug bites the plant, right? They're gonna die. Well, guess what? You're a biological. You're a biological uh, partially bee. And Thank so what's you. What happens to you when you bite the plant? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Thank you, sister. It's so true. Uh, all right, and and um, the other thing. Oh, while while I'm still on this uh, kind of nutrition side of things, um, are you at all uh, concerned about caloric intake? Like, do you think that like some some raw fooders kind of have to be more careful about this because if you eat just lots and lots of vegetables, uh, you're not you and and they're not starchy vegetables, you're probably not going to be getting a lot of calories. So, um, what's your take on this? Do you try to to maintain a minimum daily intake of calories? Do you, you do you not really have to worry about it? Do you eat when you're hungry? What's how do you do it? Okay, uh, it's a combination of eating a variety of foods and eating right for your activity level. So that person who may all week sit behind a com uh, computer or do office work and not move much, they need a certain number of calories for that activity, right? But yeah. say if they're a marathon runner or they bike 50 miles on the weekend, well, they're going to have to change up the caloric uh, profile that they're dealing with for that activity, right? Yeah. So we need to eat a variety of foods. You do need to eat when you're you eat when you're hungry, but if you have to choose the right food to eat. So some people when they eat when they're hungry, right? We talk mostly about uh, people who don't understand being nutritionally balanced. What do they grab? Potato chips or French fries or a slice of pizza. So it's not good calories. It's not yeah. even calories that the body can burn efficiently, right? So that you bring up a good point up because especially with young people who decide oh, I'm going to be vegetarian or vegan or whatever. And then they're, they think they're just going to eat pizza and potato chips and french fries. Well, number one, that's not nutritionally dense food, right? And two, that's clogging food. That's food that's going to cause heart damage and such from, from everything from it being fried and the sugar and the gluten. They say that young people now, I was reading an article some months back, they say young people, by the time they're 20, most of them have started themselves on the path to heart disease. Yeah. That's, that's from eating all the sugary foods, because last year they finally admitted what? Sugar is very, high sugar intake is very much associated with what? Heart disease. I know people are shocked. They say, she didn't say obesity. She said heart disease. Do the research, people. Anything that I say, I always tell people, go do the research. Go do the research. Don't just listen to me. Go do the research. Well, it's interesting you say that, because I... I'm a little bit more uh, concerned with fat intake in terms of heart disease than sugar, and I, uh, you know, a lot of these, um, a lot of the paleo folks who want to eat lots of meat uh, use these criticisms of sugar to to kind of create fear among people about potatoes and rice and that sort of thing. So I, I um, I think yes. You, you want to stay away from refined sugars. You want to stay away from abnormal abnormal amounts of, of artificial sugars. But I also think there's healthy carbohydrates. And and that a, a lot of the heart disease is, is mainly driven by fat intake. But but it's but it's this is interesting what you're saying too. Right. It's it's it, a lot of heart disease is from um, 
denurtured fats people consume. So things like fried food. Now here yeah. you have this, this, maybe you started out with an oil that could be health, somewhat healthy for you. If it's not processed, like coconut oil or maybe some olive oil. But people eat these things and they heat them. They heat them and those, you know, like olive oil should never be heated, right? And then also the thing is that uh, these oils, if you're not getting cold pressed oils and uh, number one, not consuming too much of them, because what happens is they actually become stale. They're, they're actually, um, what's the word? Rancid. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. They become rancid because as soon as you open that olive and take the oil out or that sesame seed or whatever, now you get air that that oil is exposed to. So like an apple that you chop and it starts turning brown, guess what? People don't realize, you know why it's turning brown? That's because the oils, yes, apple has a little oil in it. That's how you have a fragrance and such. It is becoming rancid. That quick, the air is hitting that oil on that apple and it's starting to decay it that quickly. So really, uh, since learning this about oils going rancid, I have cut out so much of the oils I used to eat. I used to eat more olive oils and things like that. So I, now I eat more, a lot more coconut oil. I don't eat that much olive oil because that oil is rancid. You don't know the manufacturing process. So for example, the products from uh, Longevity, what they do with their oils, and they do, they have um, the, for EFAs, essential fatty acids, because it's very important for the brain, the skin, all of that, that you consume good fats every day. Um, they, when they extract their oil, they keep it in a nitrogen environment. So they also do fish oils, which I don't do. But the capsules, they, they extract the oil in a nitrogen environment so that oxygen does not uh, cause the oil to go rancid. And even when they're encapsulating it, they keep, they uh, inject it in a, through a uh, with nitrogen uh, gas so that oxygen, again, doesn't get to that oil and start denurturing and causing it to go rancid. Because that rancid oil causes free radicals in the body. Yeah. Now, just think about that. All the fried foods people eat, you know, things like that. So it's better to eat a more stable fat like coconut oil, which stays more solid and things like that. But again, you want to make sure that those fats are not processed. You want them cold pressed. So whether it's the olive oil or the coconut oil, you want to make sure it's cold pressed. And of course, or organic is better for the olive oil. I was reading that there really isn't a standard for organic coconut oil. They just use the term but there really isn't a standardized thing for that. But again, you just want to make absolutely sure that you're going to eat those oils, that they're cold pressed, that you don't go buy a gallon bottle. That's something else. I don't go buy that big Costco <laughs> container of olive oil any longer because every time you're opening that container, you're letting it, that air uh, uh, you get exposed yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's the thing. And so Yes, and I was saying about the, the young people deciding to become vegan or vegetarian and, and wanting to eat such an, uh, a, a poor uh, nutritional profile, uh, pizzas, french fries, things like that. They've got to understand that there are two ways that uh, people make mistakes or need to elevate from when they make these transitions. One is to eat nutritionally dense foods, so again, do the spinach or the kale versus the iceberg lettuce, things like that. Right. The other thing is to make sure that you're eating enough calories. So that's a mistake people do make. And I was at a raw vegan award a few years ago, and I was just looking at food and I'm like, wow, these people are so thin, you know. And yeah. not that being thin is is unhealthy, but you can have an unhealthy thin, right? Sure. You know, you're you're uh, developing enough muscle to carry you. I mean, because we all have to make sure that we have enough a weight for, you know, for energy, for the body to be functioning right, and for, you know, in that time that every now and then people do become ill, you want to make sure you've got enough reserves to get you through that. So you want to eat a variety of foods, you want to make sure you're eating good fats, right, and you want to be making sure that you're eating as little as, as it, take it out, the processed food. Don't do the processed stuff. Yeah. So, I always tell people I love when I go shopping. I walk in the grocery store, right, or the you know farmer's market. I walk in the produce section. I go to the register and I leave the store. <laughs> There's no other section that really interests me. I don't want the 
processed foods. I'm not going to the meat section. I'm not going to the dairy section. Yeah. It's the produce section and out the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. There's there's two kind of big topics, but I'm not gonna. I'm I take up your whole day, but I'll, I'll just we'll just touch on them. Touch on. Um, the one is, um, I feel like you're aware of these things, but I feel like because you, you emphasize positivity so much, and I respect that, and I think that's so powerful, I think you may you may not focus a lot on these. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but um, a lot of, you know, vegans are interested in, um, you know, animal ethics and, and the environmental problems caused by these kind of lifestyles that, that are based around meat. And so I wonder, what's your take on that? I, I, I notice in you a great deal of compassion for everyone, regardless of what they're eating. So I don't, I, I feel like, kind of, it's kind of like you're, you're not really into judging people, which I love. Right. Um, so, but, but tell me what you think about these issues. Okay. First of all, you, could, you don't want to turn people off, because once you turn them off, like they feel like they're being attacked, or they feel like you're saying they're less of a person, or I'm better than you. You're not going to reach them. And my point is I want to reach as many people as possible. So by the time I get through talking about <laughs> what these things do to the body, how much better you're going to feel and look, da 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 they're ready to want to at least explore giving up meat. And when I talk also about how you're treating the animal and, and what we're getting in return, there's a consequence to that, right? Whether it's egg production, meat production, whatever. So I do talk to people, I'm trying to reach people at where they're at, and I'm trying to bring them up at the rate at which I can help them elevate themselves. Again, the point is if you turn somebody off, you can't help them. Now they're not going to listen to you. Now you've made them feel bad. Now they're going to talk to other people about <laughs> about you in that way, right? So um, I educate people. And I say this is not because you're a bad person or you're, you're stupid or something like that. When you're ignorant, and it's fine to be ignorant about something because I don't know about everything. You don't know about everything. I'm ignorant of it until I start learning about it, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're learning about something together. We're elevating together. The point is that we want the best. So these are choices. You, you can make whatever choice you want. But the point is that there's uh, consequences. There's consequences to yourself personally. There's consequences to your neighborhood, to your family. There's consequences to the planet. So, yes, on my Facebook page, my system of people, Raw Meat and Soul Food page, you will find articles that I share all the time talking about how we're destroying the forest and then the, uh, the rainforest and things like that for food production. I put up there uh, things about the hidden cameras, and they go into these slaughterhouses and things like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, it's so cool. I, I'm such a, 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 a feeling person. I can't even wash them myself. But I'll I know, them. I know. Yeah, because it's just awful. It's just, it's so cool. And then you think about you consuming foods, that means you're connecting yourself with that very directly. And I, I don't want to be connected with any of that. And I, like I say too, we are the stewards of the planets. We're not here to try and change all the natural processes and such. All, with, all that leads to is our destruction, right? So the planet's going to be fine, right? We can pollute and destroy and mess up stuff. The planet will just go through its cycle, right? Well, I don't care even if it's radiation. It's going to be around a thousand years or something. The planet will just go through its cycle and things will wash out and clear up and all of that. But guess what? We may not be here. <laughs> you know what I'm the planet's going to be fine. You know, we can make yeah. it up and dusty and dirty as much as we like, but it will clean itself up. Thank goodness the natural laws. Yeah, it's like healing. My husband said it's like how we get cut and we heal. The planet's yeah. going to heal itself, right? It's true. It's so true. We, may, we might be shaking off like fleas. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're only uh, being detrimental in the long run to ourselves. And yeah, there might be some species of bugs or or animals we take with us, but guess what? That's going to recycle too. All yeah, of that is going to recycle. That's great. Um, all right, now this other topic I want to hear you talk about is how have you how have you managed with family and and uh, social situations 
when you know what you know. So you know what's healthy, you know what's good, but obviously you're interacting in a lot of different situations. You may go to a family event, maybe it's Christmas or something. So how do you do it? Do you like, if, if, if like someone brings up topics of health, then you'll volunteer stuff or otherwise are you kind of just quiet doing your own thing, maybe bringing some of your own food so that at least you have something to eat? How do you do it? Some of all of that. Again, you're not trying to turn people off. And until their mind and their heart's open to wanting to try something new, even if it's just listening, that might be something new for them to listen to yeah. something that is, that is exactly the opposite of whatever their habits or lifestyle is. So you can only share when people, to me, for me, this is what I do. This is what works for me. I share what people are ready for. I can't go up into a family. Now, that, 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 that's an art form, sister. That is an yes. art form. <laughs> So just just younger, knowing, yeah. Yeah, when I was younger, you know, I'm going to try to, like, you know, say, you know, whatever, but people get turned off. They won't listen. They get upset. You make them feel bad. And the point is not about making somebody feel bad. It's about giving people hope, making them feel good. So they think, well, even if you are not around, you plan to see me. And maybe they start now checking the ingredients on packages of food when they go to the store. Maybe they start thinking, well, I could eat less meat, right? I don't have to eat meat all the time. Uh, and and uh, a, one of the best things is just for people to see that you feel good, you feel healthy, you're not on medication, you're happy, you're you're active. When me and my husband will go to uh, an event and we'll you know let's crank up the music and it's dance time. Man, we're out there just, you know, and people are like, are they teenagers? Oh, no. <laughs> because we're happy and we're having a good time and we're feeling our bodies moving. We've got energy, you know. So that's the best way to do things is to show people through your lifestyle and your everyday activity that you are doing great. How am I doing? <laughs> you know, how am I doing? Do I, do I want to mirror that? Or do I want to ignore that? Do I want to put that down and say, well, you don't eat what I eat, and so you're not enjoying this, that, or the other thing? Or do I want to start looking at the consequences and what my short-term and long-term um, life is going to look like? Like I say, I have cousins who are much younger than I am, but I look more youthful than they do. I don't have the issues with health. Um, I'm not on medications. You know, I'm not in a doctor's office every other week. You know, I'm not set up for a surgery in a month. You know, things right. like that. So it right. depends. you have all these options and choices, but until you're ready to start exploring them and doing the things that it will take to have that successful, uh, happy, optimized, be your best, have live your best life, what can someone do but plant some seeds when you're ready to at least let them plant seeds? <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Sister Mo Dupuy, uh, thank you so very much. Now, um, if someone wanted to contact you, ask you a question maybe, uh, or, or maybe somebody, a listener from California who wants to come find you, uh, can, they, can they send you an email, or should they just go on your Facebook page? Or uh... Yeah, well, you're, you, like you, I'm, I'm really busy. So the best thing to do is send me an email at Raw Vegan Soul Food at Gmail. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> Raw Vegan Soul Food. Easy to remember. Uh, no hard words to pronounce. Raw Vegan Soul Food at Gmail. Yeah. I'm also, uh, my husband has me up. He's my tech person. He has me up on Google Plus, LinkedIn. I, I think I've got every social platform covered. <laughs> So also you can get me at um, what is my textbook? Rawvegansoulfood.com. I've got a press kit there, so there's video loaded there. All the social platforms are there. Uh, it, it's I love my press kit. It's like a, it's like a clone of me. So that's a great place to go and get additional information. I talk more about the supplements there and things like that. So rawvegansoulfood.com. And you. raw vegan soul food at gmail.com. Gotcha. Okay. Don't forget the Facebook page. The face. I love my raw. My husband's always got. Uh, you've been on that Facebook page a while because I just love. 
finding really great information from around the world and sharing it. And I'll have people who like something, and I'm like, that looks like a person from uh, Yugoslavia. I guess that's not the name of the place anymore, or South Africa, or whatever. So I love that we've got this technology to share this information to help everybody elevate and expand their lives. I know. It's great. It's incredible. I'm in Florida. You're in California. We're talking like we're next door. It's it's fabulous. Um, there's one other one other uh, kind of nutritional question I just that just popped back into my head, and I'll ask you before I let you go. Um, a lot of raw fooders use a lot of blending, and then some people think you know too much blending is it's kind of rendering food in a way that you wouldn't eat it in nature, or or that there's too much oxidation. Do you use a little bit of blending in your preparation? Do you? What's your take on it? Okay. That's that's a great question because I was reading something by a woman, I can't remember her name, and she was saying that, that she thought people were doing too much blending. There's there's two ways to look at that. One is what are you blending? <laughs> yeah. Because you know, some I was looking at a woman's recipe for a smoothie. She must have had five or six fruits in it, but she called it a green smoothie. Now granted, she did have two cups of greens in there, but it was like about five or six fruits. She started with apple juice. She bananas, uh, one or two types of berries. Did she have pineapple in there? I mean, come on now. You know, that's a lot of fruit. You know, you would not sit down and eat that much fruit at one time. And uh, sometimes two people, I think they blend too many of the different types of fruit together. Really, with your digestive system, it's best to only eat melons together because you've got different enzymes that your body uses to digest those. So. You can eat watermelon, cantaloupe, and honeydew in a fruit bowl. That's cool. But don't eat any other kind of fruit with those. And then the other type of fruit to eat alone is citrus. If you're going to, you can eat orange and tangerine and tangelo together in a fruit bowl. Cool. But don't go put a banana with that. So eat citrus alone. Eat melons alone. And then the other kind of fruit you can mix. But don't go putting seven or eight of those things together at a time, even five. I don't think really should be more than about three or so in a blender together. So yeah. back to blending. I do a smoothie. Usually in a day, a smoothie in the morning is the only thing I blend. And then everything else is chewed. Gotcha. But again, it depends on people's activity level. And it depends on people's health profile. If you're if you're trying to get a, uh, and I don't like to call it, uh, get, get rid of a dis-ease. Disease, not disease, because we don't want people to say, well, I am now diabetes, because you're not. It's an imbalance. You've got this disease you need to rebalance in the body. So depending on your health condition, uh, if you're not able to eat much, you just have no appetite, uh, your digestive system, you're having to rebuild it. Uh, blending things might be a, a, the best option for you because you, you need to get in so many calories. You need to get in so many nutrients. If you've got no appetite, then uh, especially like people who have the big C, and I just call that communication from the body because that word carries so much weight. I'm going to let everybody try to figure out what that big C is, right? So a lot of times people don't have very much of an appetite. So to blend a lot of nutritious things in to get a very dense meal in, nutrient dense meal in, that might be the best option for them. Yeah, yeah. If somebody's an athlete, you know, and I do think some we can take some of this athletic stuff too far because it's being a marathon runner, whew, that is really hard on the body. Matter of fact, some people are saying you actually damage the body yeah. with some yeah. of these things. But anyway, they need the calories. They can go on and deal with that. But somebody who's good at like that that smoothie I mean, she was making, she was on a work way to work. She's probably going to sit at a computer. That's the, that's a lot of calories, right? Because of all the fruit, and um, it's a lot to put in the body at one time to try and digest. Like I guess especially mixing the kinds of foods together too, mm-hmm. like maybe some citrus in there with some banana. The body's going like, whoa! Even though it's pre-digested because it's blended, it's easier for the body to digest, which is great. But you don't want to overdo it for the body. So would a, would a green smoothie for you be more like? A majority of greens and maybe one piece of fruit in there, something like that. I, I'm not, I'll probably put more than one type of fruit in there, but I'm certainly not going to put five in there. So yeah. a, a smoothie I like to make would might be like coconut, a, a fresh uh, coconut, so the water and the flesh of the coconut, maybe a banana, 
maybe one or two other fruits. So, for example, maybe uh, if I'm going to do strawberries, it might just be strawberries. If I'm yeah. going to do something tropical, it might be a little papaya and uh, maybe some mango. But, uh, you know, to keep the fruit down and keep the greens up, right? We, we right. don't want to uh, call our green smoothie uh, a green smoothie and it's actually more fruit. And so people really do need to, to uh, uh, make sure their taste buds are not just looking for a liquid candy bar. <laughs> are looking for liquid candy bar quite often. And so sometimes you really actually need to do a truly green smoothie where you don't put any fruit in there. Maybe you put an avocado in there. And of course, that's a wonderful avocado and coconut are fabulous sources of calories and good fats, right? So maybe you want to do a smoothie that's uh, avocado, uh, maybe banana and coconut, something like that. Maybe a little lemon in there or something so that you're keeping it more. And I said, and when I say lemon, I'm not talking about a lot of lemon because I just said to do the citrus separately. Just a touch, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, and so uh, we, we need to do a variety of foods and do them in a variety of textures and such so that it doesn't get boring and so that we also make sure we get all those colors of the rainbow in, but still we need to supplement. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sister Modupwe, uh, fantastic inspiration. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, all the best to all your endeavors. And uh, we'll, we'll be looking for you on Facebook and on your channel and everywhere else. So. Well, thank you so much. And, again, I want to tell the audience, yeah, look up what this man does. He does a ton of things that I am so honored and blessed to have been uh, interviewed by you. And you're going to return the favor. You might be my first Skype person unless you're going to be out in L.A. Because I want you to come on my show and talk about all the wonderful things you're doing because you have – Dabbled and succeeded and just done so many wonderful things. And you've got what three or four channels? Well, yeah, but you, sister, <laughs> you're you're a sweetie pie. I I don't have a ton of viewers, you know. I huh? I do have I have many interests and many things I like to to explore, but uh, I don't have a lot of viewers. But uh, I I have most of my viewers are on my vegan channel. Okay, so, okay, but I'd be I'd be happy to talk about all these subjects with you. Anything you want to talk about, I'm happy to do it. Okay, well, hey, we can take up for just the show talking about all the wonderful things you have on your channels, and uh, we're going to contact you uh, off air and talk with you about how you can get those viewers because you need to share this. This is, people need to see this information that that you're you're putting together and your life experiences and stuff because you're doing some phenomenal things, and we want to thank you bringing that forward on the planet <laughs> thank you sister thank you very much all right so we'll we'll talk again i'm going to tell you how that vegan street fair was okay <laughs> all right yeah i wish i was out there yeah me too all right i'll take some pictures or something to send to you all right all right, all right. take care have a fabulous rest of the weekend goodbye to all your viewers enjoy life remember it's about elevating and expanding so that we can be full of love and nutritionally optimized and, and make sure to spread that around the world. We're going to be Johnny Appleseeds, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love it. Love okay. it. All Take right. Take care, darling. Bless you. All right. Bye. Bye.